okay, so I've got my reference planes in there that establish this equal measurement. But you need to think when you're making something like this, where you have panels inside a frame particularly, and the frame thickness varies, as it does here, we've got the jams that are a different size to the mullions. You need to think about what you're really trying to make equal. And we're obviously trying to make the panel size here equal. We're not trying to make the spacing for the frame and the panel equal. So from here to here, from the, this, this imaginary corner point outside the frame up to the centre of the mullion, is going to be a different dimension to the centre of this mullion and the centre of the next mullion. This point here to the corner again will be equal to the first one, but it's that one in the middle that will be different, and it's because the mullion thickness is different to the jam. So, how do we set that out and make it work parametrically with forever? And the answer, well, one way anyway, is to put in an imaginary um, edge to the frame to make it equal to the mullions. So, what I'm going to say is that the mullions are 120 mil because we do want a nice chunky mullion and that's why we're doing all of this work to get the look of the windows we don't really care about the construction but we definitely want them to look right and that thick mullion is an important part uh, of getting that window look so like I said I'm going to make it 120 mil so then I'm going to put in a reference plane either side of the window. So this is where the imaginary part comes in. We're going to put a reference plane to the left of the window opening and another one to the right. The first one's not straight, you're spot on here. So that's right, I'll draw that again. That's a good tip actually. When you do reference planes, if you notice that they're not straight, you can rotate them, but it's usually easier just to make a new one. Okay, so then we need that to be our imaginary distance from the edge of the frame. Remember I was saying it's 120 mil, um, also the width of the mullion is 120 mil, but I only need half of that on this side. So it's going to be 60 mil. So, and it's from the extrusion, so from the edge of my, uh, how can I say it, the edge of my um, window jam. Right, so I'm going to draw in a dimension from, again, the edge, the inside edge of my window jam over to the reference plane and click to place that dimension anywhere. Now I can select the reference plane and change that dimension to 60. So that is going to be our set out point. I will repeat that on the other side. So I'm going to draw a dimension from, again, the inside of my window jam to the new reference plane I've made on this side. Place the dimension somewhere. Now I can select that reference plane and make the overall dimension there 60. Now I could have done the maths and worked out that, um, what is it, 40 minus 60? It's not 40 actually, sorry, it's 35, isn't it? What did we do? I totally forgot. 35, yeah. Okay, so 60 minus 35 is uh, 25. So I could have just made the reference plane 25 from the edge. I thought it'd be clear if you see that that's 60 because that will relate to the next measurement. All right, so we drew in that equals dimension. Now I want that equals to be from my new reference planes, not from the side of the window. So I'm going to try to adjust it, and I can, but I think what I might show you is that you can just delete it and then draw a new one and, uh, and that might be easier. So uh, again, make sure it's from the new reference plane to these two in the middle that are set out 
already, and then again to the new reference plane on the right. But so notice how the numbers are different. That's how much it would have been out if we didn't do this extra step. So I can use equals now, and they're going to move. And just to make sure that, sure that all ties together, I can uh, set the reference plane, so the dimension here, to be locked. And the one on the right as well. Okay, so this is again where I need to have the set out now for the mullions using the same measurement, 60. Because remember, if we go 60 mil either side of the center line, we'll have 120 mil mullion. Okay, so using the reference plane tool, you can use the pick option. So in the panel there for draw, you can use pick line and put in an offset value, which is going to be 60, and then pick the reference planes you've already made. So this is how to offset reference planes as well. You can't use offset with reference planes, but you can achieve the same thing using that option there. So I've drawn 60 mil either side of my centre line for the mullion. Now what do you think I've got to do to make them follow the centre line? What happens if lock it spot on? Yeah, that's right. So just think about what would happen if I was to change the width of my window. This will move. And this will move. But the two either side won't until I lock them. So I need to draw a dimension from one side to the middle to the next one. Place it above. Just lock both. Same over here. And this is where I think it gets fun because you should be able to go in now and with family types try a different width and see all of those things that you've set up follow. So I'll make it 2000. And here, remove constraint. Okay, so it doesn't like me. It's trying, but it's not, um, not following it completely. So I'm going to manually change this to 60 and this one too so let's just see yeah okay so that's working it's got an issue though measuring from here okay so I know what to fix so I'm going to undo and show you what you can do to make that work better okay so again this is why testing along the way is so important it's this little thing, it doesn't want to measure from the door jam. So remember we were saying reference planes should take precedence over physical things like your solid extrusions. So what could I do there to make it work better instead of having a... Um, sorry? Exactly. You could draw a reference plane in there and it should work better. But remember I was saying that we could just set it out from here. So that's another option which might be even simpler. But it's the right idea. If you're picking reference planes, that's right. So. I'm going to select that dimension and then drag the grip there onto the reference plane that I have and it's now 25 so then I can lock it and it's just measuring from here instead so again unlock drag it across then lock it again so now I'll try flexing again Twenty-five hundred, maybe. There we go. Okay, so that's working just fine. And now I've been showing you the, the long way of flexing because I wanted to, you to get used to using family types. It's important that you know about that one. But whenever you see a dimension on the screen that has a name like this width, you can use that. Now, because I've been forcing you to select the objects to change dimensions, which is of course the right way for many things, but when you have a parameter, it knows which way to go. Don't, don't worry too much about how that all happens, but uh, if you select that, again, it's got the, the name width, so you can actually type it in. 
uh, which again you normally can't do. Hopefully you all are used to not doing it that way. But it's a nice thing when you have a parameter, you can actually use it. And, uh, and that just makes it a little bit quicker. And it's important that you test this one. If you don't get it working here, when you've got all the objects attached to it, uh, it'll be really confusing. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the center line for my mullions and also the lines either side of the mullions working. So I'll just do the mullions very quickly. And so we did this a minute ago. This is something I didn't really start with, but now we can get used to it. Drawing things off, just slightly off the line you want them on. So as I've drawn the rectangle, away from the edges that we're going to lock it to because I'm sure you realise already it's easier to align things when they're slightly off. So you can align it to the top and the bottom and the sides. Pretty quickly. And then after I've finished it I'll make the height 1000 and 1200 and then after I finish it, I will stretch it in my elevation view to lock it to the top and the bottom. And I'm going to be a bit naughty here and go right ahead and do the next mullion. I probably should flex it, but I'll take the risk. And so again, it's a process you'll get used to with Revit, drawing things the wrong size and then making them the right size afterwards is actually pretty typical. Alrighty, so there's my mullions. And so very last thing before I go on to the um, the sash and the other window components is to of course flex there. So the height, 1000, height has less to go wrong. So I'm going to try that first. This is where I've got my fingers crossed, but let's see, 2500 for the width. Bingo. Should even be able to, be able to go down to about 1000. Wouldn't really make sense to have a window like this any smaller than that anyway. So probably no need to test it below that. You will definitely get to a point where it's going to go over the top of itself. So it won't work for every size, but a lot of sizes wouldn't be needed anyway or wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. So here I'll maybe try 4,000 as about the maximum it needs to be, and it's all good. So I, know I've, I find it really satisfying personally when I can get things like this to work. And then, um, you know, if you're pr approaching it in this methodical um, process or methodical way, then you can um, easily, you know, build upon these things as you add more elements and be confident that it will work. <laughs>